All right, well, I think we will go ahead and get started here. Uh, we really appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Um, and my name is Ian Rotz, and I'm the, the person that you get all the emails from about our program. But I'd like to start and introduce the director of our program, the founder of our program. Um, he's a faculty member at UCCS for, for nearly the past 30 years, um, and, and most recently has come back to our program full time as serving as interim dean for the College of Business for two out of the past three years. So he's really done great service for the college. Um, and then we're really excited to have him back full time to our program as we continue to make strides with our students. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce you to the director of our program, Dr. Eric Olson. Thank you, Ian, and welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to have you here this evening. 13 years ago, I was serving as the associate dean in the college. And I looked around and suddenly realized that within a 10 minute drive of our campus, we had the United States Olympic, now Olympic and Paralympic Committee headquarters, its principal training ground, over 20 USA national governing bodies, USA basketball, volleyball, hockey, swimming, cycling, wrestling, figure skating, and on and on. The Colorado Springs Sport Corporation, that we had our own AAA baseball team. Up the road, we had tremendous professional teams. We had collegiate teams here, including our program and the United States Air Force Academy. And then just west of us, we had some of the best ski industry in the world. And I went to the dean of the college at that time, Ben Cat Reddy, who is now the chancellor of the whole university. And I said, you know, I think we ought to put together a sport management program. And he said, Eric, we can do this, but you've got to put together a formal business plan. We're not just going to do it on a whim. And so we sat down and spent two years in development and designed a program of distinction. Now, there are over 400 sport management programs in the country. Less than a fourth of those are in business schools, and only a small fraction are in AACSB accredited business schools. And we'll talk about what that means here in a little bit. But we set this up as a program of distinction, meaning that we have high admission standards, high retention rates, high graduation and placement rates, but we allocated the resources to the program so that we could do that. And that's where my colleagues, Ian Rotz and Rachel Leaf come in. And they're gonna to talk to you about what they provide, but the internship opportunities here are unparalleled. And it's those doors that we open that lead to jobs. And so I'm gonna turn it back to Ian to talk about this program. And we're gonna go through some slides. I know we'll have time for some Q&A at the end, but I wanna thank you for joining us tonight. And I'll be back to answer a few more questions here in just a second. Great, Dr. Olson, thank you for that introduction. And again, um, thank you for, for giving Rachel and I the opportunity to work in such a great program. It's fun to see our students succeed. And, on Friday, uh, two days from now, we have graduation, and that's always a big deal for us as a program to celebrate our student successes as they get off and start their careers uh, finally in sport. So um, just a quick couple of, of highlights, as you can see here, we are a business-based program. And so all of the students that are in the College of Business, as well as in the sport management program, they're working to earn their bachelor's of science in business, first and foremost. And we really want to make sure that all of you on this call tonight know that. Um, so that you understand what the realm of our program is, and that's focused on the business side of sports. So really, when you graduate, you're going to have two roads to walk upon graduation, the business industry and or the sports industry. And a lot of our students are going to cross between the two. Um, currently, we've got about 155 students in the program, um, and that's going to fluctuate year to year and semester by semester. Um, a huge percentage of our students, 35% are out of state, and many of you on this call I know are, are, are listening from a different state other than Colorado. And that's because, you know, Dr. Olson mentioned that we're a program of distinction, but we're also a destination program. People come to Colorado Springs, they come to UCCS because of our program, because of the density of sport in Colorado Springs, which Rachel will talk about in just a few minutes about internships and that accessibility for internships. Um, right here. And then also what Rachel will talk about is the connectedness to the to the industry, what we do with our students to engage them, to build relationships, to network, 
And a lot of that attributes to this last figure that our retention rate is over 80% every single year. And what that means is students that come to our program, no matter what state they're coming from, they find that they get what they wanted and they stay. They graduate and they move on to their careers. And that's really important for you guys to understand that, that you know, when, when you come to UCCS Sport Management, you're gonna be successful, you're gonna be engaged, and you, you likely will stay and see through your graduation like we have our students on Friday graduating. As we move forward, I wanna talk very briefly about the uh, curriculum within our program. And I understand that this screen, there's a lot going on and it's, and it's difficult to see, but really on the right-hand side, this is what the four years of our curriculum looks like. You're going to see the typical general education classes, college algebra, English composition. Um, you're also gonna see the core business requirements that all College of Business students have to take, their finances, accountings, managements, et cetera. But then on top of that, you'll see anything with an SPTM as the prefix. Those are our sport management classes. There's 12 of them. And really what we're doing is working to expose you to as many facets of the industry as possible. Intro to sports, sport law, sport marketing, facility and event management, Olympic and international sports, sports sales and analytics. Um, the list, it just keeps going in terms of, of what, you know, our professors and our faculty um, are, are able to engage you in. And, and actually, Dr. Olson, if you don't mind, speaking of faculty, I think it's a really good opportunity if you don't mind speaking of, of who our faculty are and, and who they're going to learn from. Sure, and I'll talk a little bit about AACSB accreditation as well. So I'm going to start with that. AACSB is the highest standard of accreditation for business schools worldwide. This is the same accreditation as Stanford, Wharton, Michigan, UCLA, uh, Northwestern, the top business schools in the world. And we have held that accreditation for 30 years now. Now, we don't have all of the resources of those schools, but the debits and credits line up just the same here as they do at Stanford. And the four P's of marketing are just the same here as they are at Wharton. And the five forces that Porter talks about are just the same here as they are at Harvard. In fact, if you take my senior capstone class, we throw in three extra forces for free. The point of this is though, that upon graduation, you will have earned a degree from an AACSB accredited business school, and you will be perfectly qualified to move into sport management, or if you wanna go into any other aspect of business, you will have excellent training. Now, when we come to our specific program, we're very proud of our faculty. So when we look at Olympic and international, and specifically soccer, we have Dr. Spencer Harris from Loughborough University in the UK. When we look at our professional and collegiate, we have Dr. Tommy Eicher out of the University of Massachusetts. And when you take a course like sport law, it is from an actual sport lawyer here in town who works hand in glove with the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee. So you're going to get formal training from people who have worked extensively, have earned doctorates in this industry, and we should also talk about the internships and I'll let Ian and Rachel do that. But the point is we have dedicated staff. That is their job to work directly with you. We don't leave it just for our students to figure out where they're gonna find an internship. We are the industry connections and we follow up to make sure that when we open a door and, and you walk through it, you're getting a serious and good experience. Yeah, that's great. And so that explains this AACSB box that you see on the left hand side and then aligning that curriculum, the requirements of AACSB with the sports industry. And so ourselves and the faculty that Dr. Olson just mentioned, we're working consistently with our employers, with the sites that, that host our interns and our students to ensure that when you graduate from this program, you have all of the, the um, information, the knowledge, skill sets necessary to be successful in that industry. And so we're leaning on our partners quite frequently. A great example and a recent example, our partnership with Cronky Sports and Entertainment, you know, the, the Nuggets, the Avalanche and the Rapids, they had said to us, they gave us feedback about two years ago that our students were lacking sales training and sales experience. And that's when they worked with Dr. Eicher to, to build the sports sales and analytics class to ensure that our students are exposed to the sales process to overcome challenges and obstacles that customers may present um, to complete the sale and be successful. 
And so that's something that, that we think is very important is that we are constantly evolving the curriculum to ensure alignment with the industry. As we move forward to sectors, um, I'm gonna put up a, a uh, poll here for you guys and I want you to uh, let us know what sector of sport you are most interested in. So check this out on your screen and if you can respond, but we have, have basically taken the liberty to break the sports industry into four key sectors. You could argue that there's more, that there's less, but for simplicity, we've broken it into four. And those four would be professional sport, Olympic sport, collegiate athletics, and youth and recreational. And so as we break that down, these are, you know, there's four or five logos per sector up on the screen. We're working with dozens of, you know, more clubs within each of these different sectors. But just to give you some examples, professional sport is what the, you know, most of our students see on TV. It's what most of them are exposed to and therefore what most are interested in. Um, and in this, 75% of you are expressing interest in professional, 25% are expressing interest in Olympic. And that's great to see that we've got some diversity and, and some different interests there. Uh, but professional would be, you know, for us, that's our partnerships with the Nuggets, Avalanche, and Rapids. Dr. Olson has worked since 2005 to build relationships with English Premier League soccer clubs. And since 2011, we've been sending uh, students, a total of 24 students have gone over to complete an internship. Uh, right here in town, the Rocky Mountain Vibes, our single A baseball team um, and our USL Pro uh, switchbacks. Then in the collegiate space, Colorado Springs is actually a pretty big collegiate space in terms of the institutions, as well as the conferences that are headquartered here. The Olympic movement, we are Olympic City USA. No one else can claim that brand. Um, and that's just due to the, the sheer density of Olympic sports right here in Colorado Springs, the headquarters of the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee, one of three uh, training centers, and then 26, I believe now, national governing bodies that call Colorado Springs home. Um, and that's an excellent opportunity for our students to engage in that realm. And then recreational, we have a whole bunch of other sports that don't really fit into any of these other buckets. And so they're all, um, all there, Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, the second oldest car race to the Indy 500. So really it doesn't matter what you want, um, whatever sport, whatever sector of sport you're really interested in, our program probably has connections into it. And if not, we, we have the connections to connect to that industry. That's what networking is, that's building relationships. Um, and so I think it's, it's important for you guys to understand the, the density over 60 sports uh, located right here in Colorado Springs for our students to intern with. Um, but I'm gonna now turn it over to Rachel to give her an opportunity to talk about that community connected and engaged aspect as well as the internship process and opportunities there. Awesome, thanks Ian. Hello everybody, um, I get to talk about some of the details about a lot of the fun things that our program does. Um, there's a few different venues and avenues as to how we keep our students engaged and stay engaged with our local sport community um, as a whole. So the first one that we'll talk about is the Sport Management Activity Council. We call it SMAC for short. Essentially, this is a group of our sport management students that want to be involved with the program, that want to help us steer the program, essentially. Um, these students get together and they meet typically about twice a month and usually it's in person. Uh, this year, obviously with things being a bit different, we've shifted and we've started meeting online and remotely, but it has been kind of nice to see as many people as possible tuning in from wherever they are. If they're getting off work late, they can still join. But this group of students really helps us determine what the students want to hear. Uh, it helps us stay in tune with what are the most relevant topics, what is of interest to our students right now. It's not just our faculty and staff deciding what kind of information that you're going to hear and what kind of speakers you're going to hear from. So this is the, the group of students that really helps us determine uh, some of those fun aspects to our events throughout the semester. Um, we do have quite a few guest speakers and things like that through semesters. Um, we typically try to go with about one to two a month, depending on what it is. And we try to spread the topics around. So somebody, somebody from the Olympic sport movement might speak. Um, and the next month, it might be someone from collegiate sport. Um, we try to really kind of keep people engaged with what all is happening in sport and what things there are out there that you may not know about. Um, this uh, also helps our program 
keep everyone engaged. And as Ian had mentioned, you know, we have a very high retention rate for the program. And we really think that this group of students helps us to keep that high retention rate. Um, obviously, internships is a very exciting topic to talk about. So our students are required to do two credit earning internships per year. You may have noticed that on the screen earlier with um, the courses that you have, if you could read it, <laughs> it was a little small. Um, typically, the way this works though, we have a lot of students interning every year. So of the three semesters, we are seeing around 100 interns each year going out and doing different things. And it really pertains to what students are interested in. Um, there, like Ian said, there's a lot of different opportunities right here in Colorado Springs. And even now in the time that we're in with many things moving remote, we've actually almost seen a few more opportunities that we wouldn't have normally seen from farther away um, with remote experiences being offered for internships. So it's kind of helping us expand our network, which also then helps students to be able to expand their networks um, as far as interning sites. Uh, a few of the most recent intern sites that we've had, we've had students um, in, at national governing bodies or NGBs. Some of those include USA Hockey, USA Artistic Swimming, USA Cycling, USA Triathlon, Wrestling, Fencing. There's quite a few. And those were just recent ones from previous semesters. We actually have one student graduating on Friday who is just completing her second internship with USA Artistic Swimming and has been offered a full-time job and will start with her full-time employment right away in January. So those are the kind of situations we love to see. And it's really exciting to see that our interns that we're putting out there are so successful and so welcomed by those organizations that they're then hired on full-time right away. We also have the Rocky Mountain Vibes here in town. They're an independent team of the Pioneer League, which is an MLB uh, partner league. We also have the Colorado Springs Switchbacks, their USL pro soccer team. So outside of some of the Cronky sports avenues that we have. Um, we also have some of those opportunities right here in Colorado Springs too, with a pretty close driving distance from campus as well. Um, as Ian mentioned, we have a partnership with Cronky Sports and Entertainment. They have been helping our students by gaining experience in the pro sports venues and world doing internships for them. Um, and it has actually also been doubly beneficial because they're typically a remote sort of experience where they're a little more research-based, but they're helping the Cronky Sports executives do research on what's relevant for their fan base and, and things of that nature. So you really get some hands-on work into helping their organization, and they may actually implement some of the research and some of the things that our students have come up with. So it's been a very awesome partnership, and our students and the Cronky Sports executives have been very happy with it. So we're excited to have that continue and continue to offer those opportunities. And as Ian mentioned, um, Dr. Olson has been working very hard with our relationships overseas with English Premier League teams. And we have obviously sent quite a few students, did not have anyone over there this past semester, but we are working to try and create remote opportunities as well, which is not the same as actually going over there for the full experience, but it is great to still be able to potentially have that intern experience with those big teams. So a lot on internships, but that is the very exciting part and what I love to do with my job as well. Um, some of the other things that we offer and that we have in our program, we have a mentorship program. And this typically runs in the fall semester and the spring semester. And we have quite a few community sport members from various organizations that volunteer their time and you get are assigned with one of our students one-on-one -on -one each semester to help guide them through their career path, you know, let them know how they got to where they where they are, what kinds of things are important in looking for jobs and, and networking and making connections. And it is a great way to really create a good relationship with a current sport professional out in the industry right now. It's been a very successful program. It was actually thought of and created by one of our students in the program. She put it all together and got it off and running and it has been operating for three years now, three to four years perhaps. Um, so it's been very successful and, and a very great program. We also have quite a few events typically on campus. Um, our annual sport networking night is typically held in the fall and not this past fall, but the fall before we had over 55 sport professionals attend from over 30 different organizations. And essentially our students go around, there's cocktail tables with each of our professional organizations at each table. 
our students go around, practice your elevator speech, go talk to organizations, and it's a great way to throw you into it and learn how to network and start building those connections. There are quite a few professionals that remember students year after year. It's a great way to check in with them in person at least once a year, which is very helpful, particularly as you get toward your graduation date and are looking for future employment. This past fall, we did pivot. We've been, we're a very creative program. We still wanna provide those opportunities for our students as best as we can. So this past fall, we actually created a virtual networking night that was actually pretty well attended. We still had roughly 25 organizations attend. So it was still pretty successful um, and it, it still made some valuable connections. We had some good feedback from it. So we continue to try and evolve with the times and still provide those opportunities as best as we can. Um, there are also other external networking events that we pass along to our students. We have quite a few connections with folks and they'll send us information um, the Nuggets usually have a big networking event every year, Avalanche, Rapids. There has been one that was started last year with the Broadmoor World Arena and the CC hockey team. So it kind of depends on what you're interested in, but those opportunities are there. They typically send us price reduced rates for our students. So we have some great opportunities all over the place. Um, again, there's so many different ways that we push students to get involved and really you get out of it what you put into this program and we try as best as we can to give as many opportunities as we can. Thank you, Rachel. And, and on this note of connected, I'm gonna send another poll out to you guys to see, um, we, we wanna better under, understand, are you looking for a program that's gonna connect you to the industry or is that not that important to you guys? So if you could answer that piece. Um, as Rachel said, we're working pretty tirelessly to continue uh, continually offer you events. Um, and I also want to bring one thing up as we start to kind of wind down our presentation and get ready for your questions. Please use the chat function within Zoom. It should be up on your banner um, where, you're, um, where you're able to leave the meeting and join the meeting, etc. There should be a chat function and please start chatting in questions that you have um, because that's where we're going to take the next part of this. We really want you guys to get out of it what, what you came for. Here, it's, it's showing you admission. How do you get into this program? It sounds so great. Everything is everything you've ever wanted um, that you've heard. And so how do you become part of this program? Well, this is, this is the way in. And so you're gonna see our admission criteria, depending if you are a freshman or if you are a transfer student. Um, a lot of you on this call, I know I've already been in touch with in one way or another. I also know that one of you one of you on this call are a brother of a current undergrad student who is looking to join the MBA program. Um, and so we can figure out exactly where we need to put you guys based on where you are junior, senior year in, in high school versus looking for graduate school. Um, uh, sorry, Eric, but grad school requirements are not, not listed up here, but, but we'll continue that conversation offline as well. So the biggest thing I want to call your guys' attention to if you are freshmen is this thing in red. Um, if you have a 3.25 GPA or higher and you did not do so hot on your ACT or SAT score because you might have taken it over a year ago and then COVID happened and you haven't been able to retake that exam, if you do not score where it is listed there, don't submit your ACT or SAT scores at this point. Just go with that 3.25 GPA or higher. If you're confused by that, please email me. I'll reach out to you as well after this, after this call. Um, but want to make sure that you guys have the information that you need to apply and join us uh, as we start this program. As we continue to get these questions in, I, I do have one for Dr. Olson. Rachel mentioned it about the Cronky internship and that experience. Could you explain? Dr. Olson is the one who oversees that internship. Could you talk a little bit more about some of the experiences our students have had recently? Sure, thank you, Ian. Uh, I teach what is uh, referred to as Sport Management 3970. And this is a project-based class with the Kroenke Sports Entertainment Clubs. So the Nuggets, Avalanche, and the Rapids. And basically we work with middle managers, junior executives on a specific project. So some might be identifying potential sponsors. Or another example is our students have been designing uh, workflows so that when the stadiums get opened back up, how are we going to actually admit uh, fans to watch and make sure that they are 
in compliance with COVID restrictions. So these are high level consulting projects we've been able to do remotely. Once we get back to uh, post COVID environment, we'll be able to go up and work with them in person, but it's really well um, regarded because it is a, such a high level of, of uh, intellectual capacity here in these programs. And you're working with top people on specific assignments that you can then upon graduation walk out and say, look at this is something I actually worked on and brought our recommendations to the club, many of which are being adopted. I want to expand on a couple of other things before I get off here. And when we're looking at uh, internships, I know most of you are interested in professional sport, but let me explain why having the United States Olympic Committee and the national governing bodies is so important. The way to into most entry-level positions in professional sports is through sales. Great opportunity, but not everyone wants that. In contrast with the Olympic movement organizations, you can get an internship and an opportunity in any business area at all. And so if you go to something like USA Hockey, they might have accounting or finance or management, all kinds of different internships based that might fit up with your needs or, or your interests. And the industry is quite small. So Tim Hinchy is the CEO of USA Swimming. Before that, he was the CEO of the Colorado Rapids. Before that, he worked with Derby County, an English Premier League club in, in the UK. Before that, he was with the NBA. And so having these connections are incredibly valuable. And again, this is why Colorado Springs has opportunities that nobody else simply has. And lastly, when we come back to, to the UK, uh, in the last three years, our students have interned at Manchester City, Everton, West Ham United, Norwich City, Watford, and over in Ireland with Shamrock Rovers. We also have a formal partnership with Loughborough University. It is the top sport university in all of Europe. It's in the English Midlands. And the campus is just frankly amazing. It's just a wonderful experience, but it's sport science, sport engineering, sport business, sport medicine. It is an amazing place. And we have a partnership so a student could spend a, a semester there. So again, you're gonna have a three credit junior internship, a four credit senior internship, and then, then a lot of other work experiences. So we, we just can't stress enough how important those connections are to your future. Absolutely. Thanks, Dr. Olson. And the way you just described those internships at the end, I do want to clarify one thing. I heard, and I could have heard it incorrectly, but I heard Rachel comment that you needed to do two internships per year. Um, and, and you absolutely can do two internships per year, uh, but you need to do two internships throughout your time in the program. Um, and But we do. We literally will have students that will do five or six internships throughout their time here because in that regard, more is better, more connections, more networks. So um, thank you for that, Dr. Olson. One of the questions coming in, and everyone on this call, keep sending those questions in. We will get to all of them. One of the questions is regarding um, a dual emphasis or, or a double major, and it depends on when the question is asked. I'm not sure if you mean a double major, which would be two separate degrees outside, you know, not in the same college. So engineering and business, for example, or education and business. Um, you can do that. That'll take more like six years to graduate because they're really two separate bachelor's degrees versus a dual emphasis. So if you, let's, for example, you know you want sport management, but you also have an interest in finance or marketing or international business. Those are all different emphases within the College of Business. And so our students are able to do a dual emphasis where you would pursue two of those emphases complete the coursework required, and you can do all of that within four years still um, here at UCCS. And so that's a great option for our students to diversify their interests. Um, and it really makes you more distinguishable upon graduation. Those students then have more roads and more options to them at graduation, but they're also more marketable because they have more skill sets and more knowledge um, with them. There's another question about, uh, it's a student who's attending this coming fall of 21 and is ecstatic and, and says, what can I do to get started? What, what do I need to do now? Um, we're, we're really glad to see and hear that enthusiasm. There's really not a whole lot you need to do right now. 
the biggest thing is coming up. Um, scholarships will be announced for entry for fall of 21. Housing is definitely something that you'll want to arrange in terms of um, dorms and making your selection for our, I'm sorry, not dorms, our residence halls. Um, the difference being you don't all share a bathroom. You'll share a bathroom with, with one or two or three other people maybe. Um, but so housing and scholarships are the main things that are coming up. Then we as a program will start communicating with you guys. We'll have our students start communicating with you guys as um, the spring semester winds down, as we hit summer, there will, there will keep being ongoing communication to make sure that you're engaged and you know what you need to do as you need to do it. Um, one of our other questions coming in is regarding internships, Rachel. And it's really, um, if you could, it, it, they're kind of asking, what are the different options of, of internships within the program? If you could speak broadly, I know there's a quite a broad answer, but if you could speak broadly to, to that, that would be great. Yeah, um, it really kind of depends on what direction you want to go. Um, there are obviously lots of different departments within a lot of sport organizations. Um, here lately, a lot of the kind of internships we've been seeing posted are social media, communications, internships, things of that nature. That is obviously very important right now in the sport world and that's helping them keep things going. Um, but there are, one thing that I like to tell our students a lot is not necessarily to think about what sport you want to work with or what kind of sport you want to work with, but more what you want to do when you are um, working for that organization. Sometimes those skills that you can gain at one organization can be very transferable to another organization. And that will speak more to your abilities, the fact that you've already done something along those lines. So a lot of organizations will have an accounting department. They will have a membership department. If, um, if you're part of a national governing body, they are membership based and that's how they get their money. Um, there are other organizations such as pro sports um, and even like the Rocky Mountain vibes where they'll have more of a sales component. And with the switchbacks, I know we have a lot of students that will do cold calls and they'll kind of learn how to do that sort of stuff. It seems scary at first, but it's fun to read their progress as they go through this internship and talk to them about it and how they became more confident, how they learned those skills and figure out, figured out better ways to do things. So that's kind of where I like to start when I talk to students that are looking to go on internship is what kind of things interest you and what things don't. Um, there are some folks too that might want to go into the events world and operations and things like that. So um, once we kind of know that info, we can kind of help guide you as to what organizations are currently looking for interns and what kinds of jobs you'll be doing for those organizations. Great, Rachel. Thank you. And, and you said it before, and I think it's really very much worth repeating. You students drive this process. Rachel is here to advocate for you, to make you aware of different opportunities and to open doors that um, you may be interested in having opened. Um, but we never tell you where you need to go and when you need to go. That's really driven by you guys. Um, but Rachel is your, your uh, resource for those different opportunities. I'm going to go backwards really quick um, to show you this slide. And just to kind of reference these images on the left-hand side of your screen, Ryan Peterick is up in the, the top left-hand corner selling tickets for the Colorado Rapids. This was, I believe, two years ago. The, the upper um, right net just to the right of Ryan is a table of, of some of the women in our program. This was from our, our year-end banquet, uh, fall, I'm sorry, spring of, of 2019. Um, and so we do this big formal fancy thing to get our students out, celebrate our graduating seniors. We have a, a big name keynote speaker and have a lot of fun with that. Just below them, there's a group of, of folks standing outside. That's our SMAC board committee. So our, our SMAC leadership committee for the Sport Management Activity Council. To their left is our networking night that Rachel referenced just last year uh, in 2019. And so this is, a, again, a very formal event. People are able to talk face to face and walk around a room. Again, this year we did things differently and it was still very successful, but it is a different environment. Um, and then two of our students down below, one working uh, interning with the Spurs, Emily Carlson. She since has been hired on by the San Antonio Spurs and works for them full time. Uh, in a ticket sales capacity, and then Holly Lind as she um, traveled to Rio for the Olympic Games. So that was a, a really neat one. Um, Dr. Olson, we have a, a question coming for you that I think you might be 
uh, best suited to answer, especially if you were on the town hall that happened today. Um, and it's around, is the assumption, is the current assumption that coursework and classes will be face-to-face -face this fall, fall of 21, um, and not remote due to COVID? So do you have any uh, comments? Again, it is an assumption, but any thoughts around that? That is the assumption. That's what we are planning for. I would, wouldn't be surprised if we see some level of hybridization where uh, you know, maybe tests and stuff are online, uh, where lectures are in person, but all of us are hoping to get back into the classroom. Uh, I think it's gonna be dependent upon how effective the vaccine is, how quickly the rollout is. Um, we are not going to expose anyone, including ourselves, to unnecessary uh, danger. But uh, I think we're all optimistic that by summer, we will be in a much better position. So the planning is uh, to be back on campus to the best of my knowledge. Um, but you, if things go crazy, we're gonna change that. But I think we're all expecting and hoping that it will be back to a, something approaching a normal. Yeah, and we just had a, a town hall with our chancellor and our, our upper leadership team just four hours ago, um, and they gave updates for the spring semester. And so the plan is that, uh, what, about five weeks, the February 22nd, I believe, is the date where we will return to in-person classes as best as possible. Um, a lot of classes will still be in a hybrid, remote sort of scenario. Um, but, you know, there will be labs that have to be face-to-face. -face. And so there's, there's a different um, approach depending on what the course is and what the ability to have remote versus face-to-face -face. and but yeah certainly the goal is to continue to open things back up. Um, Rachel we have a follow-up for you um, about the comments that you just made a moment ago and so do incoming freshmen, incoming freshmen meet with you to help work through and chart a plan for student intern opportunities if so how is that typically done um, and when might that happen? Sure. So typically I don't meet right away with incoming freshmen. Um, we have a few requirements before you can get to the point where you can take the credit earning internships. And those requirements really set you up to be successful with both your application process, your interview process, and your internship. Um, so one of the first things that you do right away your freshman year um, or your first year in our program is we require 50 hours of field experience. And typically those are short term, usually volunteer opportunities um, with any kind of sport industry or event or thing like that around town. Um, and we try to post those opportunities. Sometimes I'll talk to freshmen about those things. I know we've been getting a few this fall even um, where I've been helping to post those and get that information out. Um, one of the things that we do want to talk through and make sure that you talk with your advisor through early on in your academic career is if you want to plan to um, study abroad one semester, we want to make sure that we have the pre-planning in place for you so that you have your courses taken ahead of time and you're set up to be successful to be remote that semester. Um, also for our students that um, are interested in interning with um, any of the English soccer teams, um, typically when we send you over there, we want you to be able to just dedicate your semester to that organization and to your internship. So that would be something where we want to meet early on, just more for timing purposes. Um, but a lot of times with that field experience, you start to figure out what you like, what you don't like with uh, the sport industry, what kind of things you're interested in. You may learn about things that you didn't even know existed. Um, and then you move into a course that Ian teaches that is essentially our pre-internship and professional development course. Um, you work on your resume, you work on some mock interviews, you work on those skills to make sure that once you get to the point that you're going into internship, that you're ready and you're polished and you're that standard that we have for our students that we hear all the time from our industry professionals that, wow, they're very prepared. So um, once you get to that pre-internship course with Ian, that's typically when I start talking with folks. Um, I don't always meet with everyone. Some students know exactly what they want. They get the first internship that they really wanted and they just send me the the information and we get them going. And there's others that may struggle a little bit and need some help. So um, my, my title is actually program and internship coordinator. So I am pretty much dedicated to anyone that needs help getting into their internship, has questions about things. Um, 
but people don't have to meet with me. If there's an experience you get, great. I am there to support you however you need, whenever you need. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Ian, before we get to another question, I thank you for bringing this slide up. Uh, to those of our, our listeners, our viewers who are from out of state, I do want to brag about our city because consistently we are rated as one of the most livable cities in the country. Frequently we're one, two, or in the top five. And so this is a nice place to go to school. This is a nice place to live. It's a beautiful area. You know, if you like the outdoors, it's wonderful. If you like skiing, two hours away. And we haven't talked about this, but every year, Ian and Rachel put together a trip up to Breckenridge where we get free passes. And then the, the director of Breckenridge invites us to lunch and he talks about how you run one of the world's biggest ski resorts. And this is great because if you're an advanced skier like Ian, you go out and spend the day on the double black diamonds. But if you're a brand new beginner, we put you on the, on the greens and let you learn. And then Ian will take you up on the double black diamonds. But it's a fun day. And again, it's just a, it's a nice place to live. It's a nice place to go to school. Yeah, I think that's why we all tend to stay here. Most of us are not from Colorado, um, but once you get here, you just don't want to leave the outdoors and, and what you see in this image really reflects what our campus looks like. And, and to that point, Dwyer Hall, which is the College of Business, and we are, our offices are located on the third floor, the top floor of Dwyer Hall, right outside of our door is a huge window walled uh, balcony that provides pretty much this exact same view. Um, and so our students will often go up and study up there. And I don't know how they study because the, the views are just too breathtaking. So um, back to what Rachel was saying just a minute ago, I, I want to add to that about meeting. Um, to her point, you do not have to meet with us, but we are more than available to you. And I will, I will reference two of our current freshmen. They are just finishing their first semester freshman year. Um, and about three weeks ago, they individually on their own scheduled a meeting with myself one-on-one, -on -one, Rachel one-on-one -on -one, and Dr. Olson one-on-one -on -one, because they are eager, hungry, dedicated go-getters. And that's the type of student that we really wanna see. The more you put in, the more you ask for help, the more you, you try to, to arrange these meetings, the more you're gonna get out of it. Um, and so if you can tap Dr. Olson's brain and his experience at UCCS, his experience you know, teaching and academics, academics, his experience with sport, you're gonna get some of that value out of him. And so um, we really want you guys to ask those questions and engage in any way that you possibly can. Um, and so I think that's kind of winding up. If there's any more questions, please chat them in to us so we can get them answered. Dr. Olson or Rachel, is there anything else that you guys want to add to the conversation? Just wanna say thank you everyone who took the time to, uh, to uh, view us this evening. And we hope that we have intrigued you enough to uh, apply and maybe come join our program. And as uh, Ian and Rachel said, we're here to help, so any way we can, to, uh, we will be more than happy to respond. Other than that, I hope everyone stays safe, uh, COVID-free, and has a, a wonderful holiday season out there. And not to cut you off, Dr. Olson, but one more question has come in. Mm -hmm. um, so due to COVID, visiting campuses has been constrained. Is there a way to come visit UCCS, tour the, the College of Business and the Sport Management Program? Um, Yes, I believe is the answer to that. Campus is not closed right now. So after Thanksgiving, we went to a remote basis and then we will be opening campus back up um, right after the holiday, even though classes will be remote for the first few weeks. But campus still is open. I'm almost positive that they are still doing campus tours. Um, and so I will send you a link to that to make sure that you guys know how to sign up for, for campus tours. Um, we do have a virtual tour, and by no means is that a replacement. The only way to experience campus is to see campus um, and touch it and feel it. Um, but a virtual campus is a good kind of meanwhile thing. But yes, we will get you that information um, and happy to, to meet with you on campus. We can schedule that time one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but the big thing that I will comment on is, yes, you should be able to come to campus and see 
but it will not have currently, it just won't have the, the life and the energy that it normally does when our student body is present and flowing on campus. So do keep that in mind. Um, you'll see the buildings, but you won't see the energy and the activity that is that is normally happening there. So um, with that, Dr. Olson, I'll send it back to you to um, have any closing remarks and, and say what you said again. All right, well, uh, thank you, Ian. Thank you, Rachel. And thank you to all who have participated this evening. Again, reach out to us. We'll be thrilled to talk to you and uh, stay safe out there. Have a good evening.